Hello everyone, this is Osmo HD here with a brand new video guide for you here today. In this guide, I will cover how to play as the Iberian Emirate of Granada from the 1444 starting date. With the upcoming release of the Golden Century expansion and the corresponding 1.28 Iberian update, Granada and the formable country of Andalusia have been overhauled with brand new events, mission trees, and the new province of Malaga. For the purposes of this guide, I will be showing you how to survive, expand, and form the nation of Al-Andalus and obtain the Re-Reconquista achievement. This guide will be broken down into several parts, corresponding chronologically to the steps one must take to optimally play and succeed as Granada. It should also be said that this video features gameplay footage of the new Golden Century update, and that these features will be available for everyone on Wednesday, December the 12th. Let's get started with the guide. At the start of the game in 1444, Granada starts with only four provinces totaling 30 development. You begin your campaign with three truces with your Iberian neighbors. Castile cannot attack you until 1448, and Portugal and Aragon cannot attack you until 1449. Even worse, though, is that our king is incredibly incompetent, possessing a pathetic skill spread of one admin, one diplo, and zero military skill. If our people have any hope of survival on the Iberian Peninsula, then we must act to increase our power base as fast as possible. Before unpausing the game, we should begin working on our preparations. Given that our economy is quite undeveloped, we should reduce our army maintenance to around 10% and mothball our fortress in Malaga. Next, we should work on our states and assign the province of Malaga to the Alima, call a diet and grant generalship for the Amirs, seek support of the clergy and recruit a minister for the Alima, and finally demand military support from the Amirs and demand administrative support from the Alima for 150 monarch points respectively. At this point, we cannot assign any of our provinces to the merchant guilds, and thus we will not be able to demand diplomatic support for them for the time being. After dealing with our estates, it's time for us to build our army up to the force limit of 9. For the purpose of this guide, we will recruit one regiment of cavalry and two regiments of infantry. After recruiting reinforcements for our army, it is time for us to assign our diplomats. Our first diplomat will ally Morocco, who begins the game friendly to us and willing to form an alliance. We will send our second diplomat to build a spy network in Tlemcen, the minor Algerian nation to our immediate southeast. Our goal in the first four years of the game, and before our truces expire, is to fabricate a claim on Tlemcen, go to war with them, and annex most of their territory to build up our development and power base. To that end, before finally unpausing, make sure that you rival Tlemcen so that you can later benefit from increased power projection and reduced diplomatic cost in demanding their provinces. You may or may not have noticed by now that we also have a looming disaster, the Granadan War of Secession, on the top left of our screen. This disaster has been introduced in the latest update and provides us with an opportunity to replace our terrible starting ruler with a slightly better pretender. The only way to avoid this disaster from firing is to obtain an error with an administrative, diplomatic, or military monarch skill of 5 or greater. As this is unlikely to happen before the disaster triggers in 1446, a mere two years after our campaign starts, the disaster will likely fire soon and will allow us to replace our leader. In about half of the Granadan starts I have played for this update, the disaster fires, and if it does, you receive an event that allows you to set the pretender as your heir, and the disaster and boost your legitimacy and stability by one. Either way, you will likely receive an heir with better stats than your current ruler, and thus, you do not need to actively avoid this disaster from firing. With our preparations out of the way, we can unpause the game. Our diplomat will successfully return with an alliance from Morocco, and when he returns, we can assign him to further improve relations with Morocco once the diplomatic cooldown expires. This will be necessary later for us to complete our first mission, fulfill Moroccan ties, as we will need to have relations of at least plus 150 with them. We can now speed up the game and wait for our spy network in Tlemcen to build up. Once it reaches above 10, we will go ahead and increase our army maintenance to 100% and make our preparations for war. To get started, we need to request military access from Morocco so that we can land our armies in their territory before we invade Tlemcen. Next, once you have transported all nine of your regiments onto Moroccan soil, we will set several key provinces of Tlemcen as our strategic interest. We should assign the provinces of Merzil Kabir, Ujda, Talaizman, Warhan, Dara, Ujtminis, and Teteri as provinces of interest, assuming you have the Cossacks expansion. If you do not have the expansion, please disregard this step. After landing our armies in Morocco on the border of Tlemcen and setting the northern Algerian lands as our provinces of interest, we can now begin our war. First, go ahead and fabricate a claim on neighboring Milzir Kabar and withdraw your diplomat. Now we must declare our war. Tlemcen normally has around 9 to 10 military regiments and occasionally allies Mazab, Jared, or Togart, so recommend that you promise Morocco territory in order to bring them into the war. After declaring your invasion, send your returning diplomat to Mazab to begin building a spy network there. With that out of the way, send your men into the province of Mirza Kabira and Ujda. The war will be quite easy as the combined forces of you, Morocco, and Morocco's vassals will greatly outnumber and overpower Tlemceni resistance. Be sure to try to get the northern Algerian provinces before Morocco does, which will allow you to occupy the territory and prevent them from wanting them in the peace deal. 
The southern Tlemcen provinces of Figuig and Castier can be safely ignored and given to Morocco, but I highly recommend that you occupy all of the other provinces before Allied forces get to them. Outside of the western Tlemceni provinces that you already occupy, Morocco will not desire any of the other Algerian provinces and will transfer occupation to you if they get there before you do. By this point, your relations with Morocco should be above 150 and you should go ahead and complete the mission Moroccan Ties. Once you fulfill this mission, go ahead and recall your diplomat from Morocco and reassign him to improving relations with Tunis in the east. Throughout the war, be sure to blockade the enemy ports to build up your war participation and speed up the sieges of the forts. With some luck, you and your allies can fully occupy Tlemcen before your truce with Castile expires in 1448. During the war, the Granada and Succession disaster will probably fire, unless if you were lucky with getting an heir with a high enough monarch skill. If it does, simply ignore the pretender armies and allow them to occupy your provinces. Eventually, they will send you an ultimatum which allows you to replace your heir with a decent ruler. Only accept this offer if, and only if, the pretender king has less monarch power. In this case, we will not accept the offer as the pretender rebels want to install a 343 ruler, and the event will only give us a 214 heir. If this happens to you, simply allow the rebels to keep occupying provinces and mothball your fort in Balaga to let them get to your capital faster. Eventually, they will force the rebel king onto their throne, and you can finally replace your terrible starting ruler. Keep up the war effort in the meantime and occupy as many provinces as you can. Regardless of when you win the war, once you obtain 100% war score, you can start demanding provinces. At this point, if Tlemcen had any allies, you should vassalize them in a separate peace deal. Ideally, this vassal will be at war with another Berber minor nation, which will drag you into war without needing to use a claim. This is actually great, as it will bug out Moroccan trust, allowing you to take most of Tlemcen's provinces without them hating you. Once this is accomplished, demand all Tlemceni provinces except for Figuig, which you can give to Morocco's vassals, and Castier, which you will ignore, and take some ducats in the peace deal. If you weren't able to vassalize Tlemcen's ally, Morocco might be a bit pissed off and you might lose a moderate amount of trust in the peace deal. This doesn't matter much, as the next part of our guide relies on a defensive war that makes Moroccan trust unnecessary. Once you take all of the provinces, pause the game and fabricate a claim on Mazab's province of Lagout, if necessary. In this particular campaign, Mazab was at war with Togert, who we vassalized in the war, thus bringing us into war with them. We didn't need a claim in this case. What you do next depends on if you needed the claim or not. If you didn't need the claim, continue the war and fully occupy Mazab as fast as possible. If you need the claim, go ahead and forge it, and withdraw your diplomat and release Algiers as a vassal. You can now core the remaining Algerian provinces for yourself. If you didn't need the claim, like in this campaign, disregard this step and simply annex Mazab and feed the territory to Togart. If you get Togart as a vassal, feed them the three Algerian core provinces and core the remaining western provinces. We only need one vassal, so if you release Algiers while also having Togart as a vassal, both of them will probably have more than 50% liberty desire and might derail your campaign. Once finished feeding your vassal of choice, unpause the game and send your returning diplomat to Tunis to ally them if possible. If you can't ally them, or if they rival you, it isn't the end of the world, but will definitely slow down your campaign. At this point in the game, you have conquered Algeria and have a decently powerful Berber vassal to help you in the wars to come. Pause the game and go ahead and destroy the castle in Tlemcen province. It is expensive and we will not be needing it. Next, we need to have our pretender rebels finally siege out our capital so that we can replace our terrible ruler. In this campaign, I was forced to give my vassal the extra province of Iran so that the rebels could occupy more than half of my lands, thus breaking the country and replacing my ruler instantly instead of forcing me to wait 24 extra months before they broke the country. If they have already succeeded by now, you can safely skip this step. Regardless, no matter how you solve the secession crisis, you can now complete the mission, route the pretenders to give yourself a boost to manpower regeneration. We can now also complete two additional missions that will give us much needed development, claims over all of southern Iberia, and a ridiculously powerful general. To complete the first mission, the plight of our kin, we must boost our stability to plus two and give 30% of our stated provinces to the Alima estate. In this case, we will give the Alima the province of Jabal Tariq. Once these prerequisites are met, unlock the mission, and this will give you 6 extra developments in your capital for free. To complete the second and most important mission, prepare for war, we must send out our finest diplomat to either insult or scornfully insult Castile. Once this is achieved, pause the game and click the mission. Congratulations! You have just received claims over all of southern Iberia and have a godlike general. It is now time for us to prepare for what comes next. More lives matter, and the Iberians must pay for the atrocities they have committed against our ancestors. 
At this point in your campaign, you'll probably have Morocco and Tunis as strong allies, a decently sized vassal, and many claims. Although it is tempting to declare war on Portugal to take your core of Ceuta, it should be noted that you will only be able to call on Morocco by promising them land, and that Tunis will not join you as they don't care. If Portugal is somehow not allied to Castile, by all means go for it and declare on Ceuta. 99% of the times though, Portugal will be allied to both England and Castile. In this case, a war would be unwinnable, since your navy and Morocco's navy will not be able to overpower Portugal and Castile, let alone England if they decide to join you as well. In order to progress from here then, we must intentionally weaken ourselves so that the Iberians will want to attack us, which will bring in both of our allies and all of their vassals. Let's go ahead and set our attitude towards Castile as threatened, assuming that you have the Cossacks DLC. If not, disregard that, and let's move on. In order for our strategy to work, we must transport all of our armies onto our African territories and off of the Iberian Peninsula. Additionally, we must mothball our fort in Malaga and decrease our army maintenance to the absolute minimum. We will also go ahead and mothball our fleet and have it part in our African ports. You should also go ahead and core the remaining uncored Algerian provinces you have and deal with any separatist unrest by either increasing autonomy or by temporarily increasing army maintenance and routing the rebels. Your diplomats at this time should be either building spy networks in Portugal to claim the coastal province of Algarve, or increasing relations with Aragon and or France for eventual alliance opportunities. Alternatively, you can also increase relations with your vassals so that you can diplomatically annex them in a few years. I would also recommend building a few light ships to help in the naval battles to come. Go ahead and set the game to speed 5 and wait for somebody to declare war on you or Morocco. In two out of the three test campaigns I have tried, Castile supports the independence of a Moroccan vassal and is dragged into war to support them. Luckily for you, Morocco can call you into the war, and with you, your vassals, and Morocco and their vassals, you are evenly matched against Castile and the rebellious vassal. Unfortunately for you, though, is that your Iberian provinces will almost immediately fall under Castilian occupation. If you get lucky, like I did in this campaign, Portugal will be embroiled in a war and vulnerable for conquest. I was able to declare a war for my core in Suda without any of their allies joining them. Even if they aren't in a war, their ally Castile will be tied up in the independence war and will thus not join them. Likewise, their traditional English ally is normally embroiled in a conflict with France and will not normally join the war either. Later on, you can always white piece Castile and stay in the war with Portugal without Spanish interference, which we will do in this guide. After fully annexing Morocco's rebellious vassal, in this case Seuss, try to white peace with Castile as fast as possible. Unfortunately for my campaign, I wasn't able to do this until I had 20 war exhaustion, but your mileage may vary. Regardless, once you can white peace Castile, do so and stay at war with Portugal. If done correctly, Portugal will have no allies in the war and with some luck and some skill you can overpower them. The goal here is to occupy at least their fort of the Overa so that you can take their southern provinces. Once you annex enough of their territory, generally around 50 or more war score, go ahead and send them a peace deal, where you take their southern provinces, the island of Madeira, your core of Suda, and force them to another alliance with Castile and take as much as money as possible. In order to afford the ridiculous administrative court costs of the Portuguese provinces, especially considering our war exhaustion, go ahead and set your national focus to administrative monarch power. While paused, you can now rival Castile and assign one of your diplomats to integrate your Algerian vassal. Before moving out of the next step, we will also go ahead and destroy our castle in Suda as it is quite expensive and largely unnecessary. With Castile rivaled, and despite Morocco probably turning hostile, your situation in Europe has greatly improved. Once you rebuild your economy and improve relations with the rivals of Castile, generally Aragon, France, and or England, you can eventually ally them. At this point, if you have the Dharma DLC, go ahead and scornfully insult Castile if you haven't done so already. This will further increase relations with the rivals. Your goal here is to ally either France or Aragon. You can promise one of these rivals Castilian land in the next war, and without Portugal allying Castile, the next war should go quite a bit easier. While waiting for our alliances and for the Castilian truce to expire, feel free to give the merchants guild Suda and demand diplomatic support. This will be useful later on for our first idea group, which will be exploration. The absolute worst thing that could happen at this point is Castile getting the Iberian wedding event and opting to personally unionize Aragon. If this happens, your options become rather limited, but you can opt to continue and ally France or the Ottomans and pray for the best. Or, you could also accidentally control the delete and end EU4 as a process, saving your Iron Man campaign. For this campaign guide, the event actually fired, but luckily, Castile was inbred enough to select the local noble option. So let us go ahead and skip forward to when our truce with Castile expires. Go ahead and set the game to speed 5, manage rebels, and continue improving relations with France and Aragon, if you haven't managed to ally them already. 
Time has finally come that we have been waiting for, and our truce with Castile has expired. By this point, an alliance with France and or Aragon has been secured, and Castile has probably just finished their civil war event, leaving them incredibly weakened. This is our chance, and it is time for us to repair our invasion. De-mothball and refortify your forts in preparation. Go ahead and also request military access from your new ally, in this case Aragon, and ship your men into their provinces before we start our war. Note that this might potentially backfire and allow Castile time to ally other nations. In our guide, Castile allied Hungary, but this really isn't much of a problem. If your ally, in our case Aragon, is in debt, like they are in this guide, you can debase your currency and send them some ducats to get them to join your war. I have skipped ahead in time a bit to integrate our vassal, and now it is time for war. Send Aragon any money if they are in debt, promise them land, and declare war. During the war, it is imperative that you occupy the provinces of Mercia, Albertosete, and Jane before Aragon can get to them. This is because they desire them as provinces and will not transfer occupation to you. Be wise in your fights and try to stick with Aragon's armies. Castile's armies will still outnumber yours. In this campaign, we got lucky, as France decided to jump in and declare war on Castile at the same time. Once the war is going in your favor, consider setting Castile's allies land as war objectives so that your Aragonese attack dogs can siege them and get them out of the war as fast as possible. Once Castile's ally has lower or medium war enthusiasm, separate peace them. Once your war score is sufficiently high enough, it is time to make peace with Castile and reclaim all of your Andalusian provinces. In the peace deal, it is required that you take all of the provinces in the Andalusian region, so that you can get access to amazing new missions and unlock the Re-Reconquista achievement later on. If you took Portuguese provinces earlier in your campaign, as shown in this guide, you will be able to form Andalusia after the peace deal, take your required provinces, and as much money as possible. Aragon might hate you, but we won't need them anyways after the war. Once the war is over, go ahead and pause your game. Select the mission Liberate Cortoba, which will give you 100 admin. This should allow you to core the rest of your Andalusian provinces. Next, we need to break our alliance with Aragon, as they will drop us anyways and ally the Ottomans. You are now completely protected. With that out of the way, go ahead and unpause and core all of your provinces once you obtain the new administrative power. I forgot to mention that you should also grab Exploration as your first idea group if you haven't done so already. Congratulations! After a few years, once you finish coring your ancestral homelands, you will be able to form Al-Andalus! After forming Al-Andalus, your options expand exponentially. You now have control over all of Upper and Lower Andalusia, have obtained superior ideas, including a base ambition of plus 15% army morale, have allied the Ottomans and Tunis, and can potentially seek alliances with Mega France or other European powers. From here on, in order to obtain the Re-Reconquista achievement, you only need to conquer the rest of the Iberian Peninsula. My recommendation would be to immediately go to war with Portugal in order to take their islands they use for colonization, or alternatively, vassalize them and have them colonize the New World for you. Likewise, with your Turkish and Tunisian allies, you can also go to war with Aragon once your truce expires in order to complete more of your mission tree and unlock juicy cores over all of Iberia. If you've picked exploration as your first idea, as I have in this guide, I would recommend you to explore the new world so that you can get the colonialism institution and start founding colonies in the Caribbean while simultaneously colonizing around the coast of Africa so that you can eventually reach the Spice Islands and make tremendous amounts of money. Either way, the hardest part of the campaign is now over, and the Moorish people live to see another day. More lives matter, and I thank you for watching this long and complicated video guide. That concludes our video guide for Granada and to Andalusia. If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate a like or a comment, as these will really help the channel grow. Stay tuned for more content coming this week, although it might be a little bit delayed as I have pressing real-life school obligations. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next video.